this is Mike Bot. Today I'm going to be starting my Creality 2.0 series. As you can see here, I have my Creality K1 Max ready to be unboxed and ready to kick this series off. So I'm excited to get this going and I will see how it goes. So this printer did arrive upside down even though it's as fragile the side up. Shipping companies don't know how to read unfortunately so I'm hoping it's in one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and get this unboxing started and uh, I'll talk about the printer a little bit more once it's unboxed and take it from there. But stay tuned for Creality Cloud integration, slicer settings, troubleshooting and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and start unboxing it here. I have two different cameras shooting so hopefully I'll be able to get all the necessary angles for this unboxing. First things first, we have the manual. So it says it's qualified certified. Got a bunch of cool stickers, after sales book, and the quick installation guide, which I will probably need. padding right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my other camera and we'll do a bird's eye view on the unboxing or somewhat of a bird's eye view but at least a better angle. So I'm going to have to be careful here because we got a piece of glass right on top. Then I'm going to remove this. So the piece of glass came in one piece thankfully. This looks like it's the lid cover. I'm just going to place it gently on the side here. And grab this foam and put it near the glass in case it falls. Now to carefully lift this out. Oh, it's heavy. Let me remove some more things. Okay, next we have... Oh, the LCD screen. So there's the LCD screen. Put that aside as well. Power cable. more padding. We're not messing around with the padding on this big boy printer. And we got a big box here. So open that up carefully. So first thing in the box looks like there is a toolkit. Yep. So here is the toolkit. So in here we have some tools, some snippers, a 10 and 12 millimeter wrench, scraper, uh, nozzle declogger, a glue stick, and grease. Oh, and a USB key. So I will go through that afterwards. Let me just put that aside for now. They gave me a Hyper Series full one kilo roll. Take notes, bamboo. It's not 200 grams or 50 grams. It's a full spool. We have, oh, I got the, uh, so the, from what I've read online, there's two different styles of nozzles. I got the newer version with the newer style nozzle. So this one is apparently a lot easier to work with. We got some pads for the feet. Again, take notes, bamboo. These aren't $12. They came with the K1 Max. There's four of them. Then I have here, this is the uh, door handle. A little surprise that doesn't come uh, installed already. And then the spool holder. That's it in that part of the package. Let's see what else we got in here. Yeah, we got some more uh, padding here. There's nothing in there. I think I am ready to take the printer out now. So I am going to have to do this in a way where I don't hurt myself. So I might get in the way of my camera while doing this. 
but that's why I got two cameras so I can make sure I got the shot on both sides. Pull this out gently. Oh, it's a heavy printer. So as you can see, it's quite the beast of a printer. This is 300 by 300 by 300. All my other printers, which are bamboo, are 256, or the minis, which are 180 millimeter. Looks very similar to the bamboo style heat head here. Okay. Whoop. Whew, that was scary. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the rest of the stickers inside here, and then uh, I will start working on the assembly. So there's a sticker. So there's a sticker on the cooling fan here. First thing I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna look inside here and see if this has any, uh, if it has any bolts that are holding down the bed. I remember with my bamboos, they had those. So what I'll do actually first is I'm gonna show you what's in the kit. So you get a pair of these snips and they seem like they're pretty decent quality. You get this wrench. You get a little toolkit here for nozzle changes, flat head, Allen keys, extra screws, nice little metal scraper, nozzle, plug, remover, USB key, probably has firmware and all that stuff, glue stick, and then some grease. So this, most of this stuff I don't need right now. So I'm just going to put it all back in. I'm just going to need the tools. So I'm going to grab this camera here so I can give everyone a really good angle of what I am doing. So I'm just gonna look inside here. Please try to grab this. Garbage. Here's the bed. Look at the size of this thing. It's not double-sided though. I will order a few more of these. I'll do a video while ordering them, including the spare nozzles. And then I just wanna see if the bed is locked down. What's really cool is they have two screws here. So when you click the bed in, it, uh, locks in place all right let me grab i'm gonna grab my phone what you need to do is you need to remove these screws so there's looks like there's three of them there's even a little foam pad and they have a little sticker here that holds down the lcd uh, cable so i'll grab my allen keys figure out which one it's gonna be now that I've opened this up, there they are, you go. One, two, three, four sizes. A nozzle changing tool, and then a little screwdriver. So you're going to need, not the small one, but one that's slightly bigger to remove the screws. And I haven't read the manual or anything, so I'm just eyeing this out just to kind of show you all how easy this is to do. And I'm sorry for the angle of showing my back, but there's no other way for me to film this. So what I usually do is once I've removed the screws, I save them. I'm 99% sure you'll never need them again, but I like to save them. And then I like to remove the stickers just to kind of tell me that I've removed that screw. So coming from Creality Printer originally, Creality is the reason I got into 3D printing. My first printer ever was an Ender 5. I actually have an Ender 5 series on my channel. Loved the printer. I never had any issues with it. So I always hear horror stories, Creality's this, Creality's that, but honestly, I, I did invest a lot of money into my Ender 5, but I never had any issues with it, ever. So looking at the Ender 5 and how far Creality has come, it's incredible. They've really stepped up their game. I know Bamboo kind of lit a fire under every single manufacturer's butt, but 
Creality already had this technology and they may have just been releasing it slowly originally. And then when Bamboo came in and started dominating the market, I was like, you know what? We've been in this game longer than you. So take this Bamboo. And Bamboo is yet to release a large printer. So the fact that Creality has this, their new K2 is 350 millimeters cubed. That thing is a beast. Bamboo is still not releasing faster printers, or sorry, bigger printers. And speaking of speed, I believe this thing is capable of 600 MMS. I know the Bamboo printers can do 500. You might be able to push them to 600, but results may vary. Probably same thing with this. Results will vary if you push it to 600. Okay, so I've removed the three screws. Um, I notice they have a charcoal filter back here. So I'm just gonna remove the sticker in the back. And then take a look at that filter up close. So in the back here, and I'll show you afterwards what it looks like. Oh, this is an interesting design. So they have a charcoal filter with a screen built in, and you can probably clean this out a hundred times if you want. You probably should replace it after a while, especially if you're printing ASA and ABS. That's basically it back there. All right, so let me start now with the LCD screen. So we'll just see here, lower the camera. So here's the little sticker, the LCD screen, just remove that. And then it just clips in right here. Okay, so I've attached the cable and this seems to be already easier than bamboo. So they've learned the lessons from bamboo and they've kind of improved on them. And then I've just clipped this screen into the printer here. I didn't clip it on well, so I'm just gonna take another look. Okay, so to clip it in, you just pop it in. So push in and then down. And that locks it in place. That screen's in place. I've removed the little cover on it. Just wanna see how it closes here. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, next I'm gonna attach the door handle. So for the door handle, you have this. It has a nice little 3D printed look to it, but it's not 3D printed. And then the magnet and screws. And the door handle has been installed. And I think that's pretty much it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the printer around, put the legs on the other side. And I think these are just dampeners. Next, spool holder. Where does this thing go? Right here. It just spins in like that. There she is. Beautiful. And that's it. That's how you unbox it and assemble it. All right, so I've plugged in the printer. Now I'm just gonna flick the switch in the back here and the printer should power on. So you can uh, see the Creality symbol here. What I'll do is I'm gonna lower the other camera to give everyone a better view here. Okay, I don't know how good this angle is going to be, but hopefully that works. So basically I'm selecting my language, clicking English, next, remove three screws, A, B, C, done, accept the agreement, and then do your Wi-Fi network. So I'm just going to select my Wi-Fi network here, my password in, my network is now connected, so now I'm going to click next. So while I was in the, net, in the network screen, I noticed it says Ethernet. This thing has, oh yeah, it does. That is awesome. Big, big bonus reality, wow. In order to get Ethernet with Bamboo, you need to get their um, business edition of the X1C. Anyway, so now I'm going to select my time zone. So I'm in the Eastern time zone. One thing I will say right off the bat, this touch screen is responsive. Wow. Like no hesitation, it just works. And then area, you have China or international. International. Give me a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bind this to Creality Cloud right now. So what I'll do is I'm going to open the Creality Cloud app. I'm going to start a screen recording session. 
so I can show everyone what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my account here. And then I am gonna, oh, actually I'm gonna go to Workbench. And I'm gonna click Add. And then I'm gonna scan the code to see if it'll add the printer and it'll bind it to the Creality account. Oh, there we go. Okay, one max. I'm just gonna name it MikeBot. So I am screen recording this, so you're gonna see that as well. And just like that, it's bound. Boom. So one thing I'll say, they destroy Bamboo with the setup process and Wi-Fi with Bamboo after attempt 5,000 times to get the Wi-Fi to bind and to bind it to everything. This just worked right off the bat. So I've already bound the printer to my app. I will resume with that shortly. So now I'm just gonna click next here. And then I'm gonna have it do the self-check. So now it's gonna run its self-check. It's gonna heat the nozzle. It's gonna heat the bed. It's gonna heat the brake fan, the main board fan, do the shaping, auto leveling. I'm gonna have to redo all this after because the printer's not staying in this location. And then I will, uh, then I will resume the screen recording on here and show everyone what it looks like. So I'm just gonna let this run. Once the self-check is done, I will resume the recording. I figured actually I'm gonna record this while it does it because I'll have to remove this. So I'm only gonna run the one camera while it does this. And just so you can hear the noise level and everything, I'm gonna put the microphone up close. So pretty quiet as it's raising the bed. So I will let that do its thing. And while I do that, I wanna just look up the nozzles and then I'm gonna screen record that. So. Like I said, this thing can do 600 MMS and the acceleration is 20,000. So it's not messing around. It can, it, the flow rate is 32 millimeters cubed per second. It's the core XY structure. It's an incredible printer. I can't wait to start printing with this thing. So I just want to take note of this sound. This is the exact same calibration sound with the band we got. So it's very, very similar in that sense. Except this is a massive, massive bed. So one thing I'm just gonna show here, there are two types of nozzles for the K1 Max. There's the old style and the new style. I think mine has the new style, which is the K1C style, and I'm doing a screen recording here to show everyone. So take note of that. If you have the new style, which is, I'm pretty sure what I have, it's a quick swap nozzle, and it makes nozzle swapping a lot faster. If you don't have the new style, I think you have to get the one with the heat break. Either way, the nozzle change seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I will take apart the head in this video and just take a look myself so everyone knows for their own reference as well. All right, so as you can see, the self-test, self-check has been completed. And now I will resume with the setup. Just gonna click OK. And I'm just gonna download the new firmware really quick. While I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and order the PEI sheet and the new nozzles. You got one, but I wanna make sure I have one of each nozzle, especially since I have the new quick change. So take note of this. If this is the nozzle that came with your K1 Max, you have the new quick swap nozzle. This is also called the V3 nozzle. Um, if you have one that looks different, it's probably the B2 most likely. Just got to let it do its firmware update and proceed from there. I've ordered my spare parts. I recommend you do the same as well. It's always good to have spares. Now, while this completes its uh, firmware update, I was going to take apart the head, but now that I know I have the quick swap nozzle, essentially all you need to do to replace this is use this guy. And I will just show everyone how that works. So what you do is you go inside the head there, heat it up, make sure it's nice and hot. Careful not to burn yourself. You take this end, put it in the nozzle, and then you turn. Old nozzle drops out, pop this one in, screw it back in, and that's how quick the nozzle changes are done. So that's kind of convenient, way faster than the bamboo ones for sure.
that's basically it. So I'm going to shut this guy down now. And I'm going to find a place for it. And I'm going to wrap up this video. Just strengthen this out here. Um, what I'll do one last part before I wrap this video up is I'm just going to go into the Creality app and just show everyone what that looks like. This Creality Cloud has done an incredible, incredible job fixing this up and making it look better. So this is what the workbench looks like. I have my printer here. Um, we got all my settings here. We can print from cloud. You can slice directly off the cloud app. You can print from local files. I love the speed. I love the speed. Adjust your temperatures. And then if you double click, not double click, if you click the camera up there, you can see what the printer is doing. And then you can just change that. Light off. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on the Creality Cloud app. So look out for those videos. The Creality Cloud app is incredible. They've done a bang up job making this integration seamless, fast. The, the speed of this thing, uh, just from a, a UI perspective, is incredible. I'm really excited. Once I find the final resting spot, I'm going to do a test print. I will probably film a test print and throw it at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And if you didn't, let me know why in the comment section. I've included a bunch of links for everyone on where you can get the K1 Max, where you can get all the spare parts I purchased. So check those out in the description. And I'm excited to kick this series off. And here, the official sticker is broken. <laughs> so thanks again. and. Again, beautiful printer. It's Red Dot Winner 2024. I am so excited for this project. So thank you all again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. My bot. So I decided to put the K1 Max in my second print room with the rest of the enclosed printers. So as you can see, it's kind of tight back here. So I ended up putting my spool holder right there, as you can see, instead of using the one for the K1 Max. And then I decided to run a print. So feeding the filament uh, was a bit of a pain actually, surprisingly, but I managed to get it to go finally. And then I ran my first test print. Um, sorry, I'm using an AI gimbal here and it's acting funny at the moment. So there's the K1 Max saying the print is done. So I basically printed the onboard uh, file, which is for... I printed the onboard file, which is for a side spool holder, which should fix my issue. And then there it is. And it came out looking incredible. It was flawless. And there's my first test print. So stay tuned for more videos coming soon. I'm going to show you how to incorporate Creality Cloud into your printer and how to print files off of Creality Cloud. So I'm just going to go ahead and run another print here. So I'm going to use the local print files. And I'm going to print the uh, spool holder with Hyper PLA. Now, I'm not using Hyper PLA, uh, so I'm not sure if that's a good idea, actually. So let me go with the, uh, let's go with the scraper. You know what? Let's just go with this one. And it's just printing now. And that's what it looks like. I love this gigantic bed. So here is my first test print. Uh, as you can see, it came out looking really, really good. And... Now I'm going to be able to mount my spool holder on the side here. So I will uh, make a YouTube short on that pretty soon, so keep an eye out for that. So here is the printer in action. And now I'm just going to let it do that print.